today's video is to bring to light something that all the locals here hate. It is a freaking wreck. Literally, look at these abandoned vehicles. I counted over 20 abandoned vehicles. And something that many of the tourists have no idea about. Some of them do, and the only way they know about it is if they rent a car on the island here. And so today, I wanna go around and show you this really bad eyesore, this really bad problem here on Guam that the government doesn't really address. And I don't really know why, maybe you guys know why the locals here on Guam, but it's so bad and I've never seen it this bad in my life. Sure, maybe there are other islands, other countries around the world where there is a similar issue, but it's something that needs to be fixed. So one of the reasons why I'm walking down here is to see if I can find this problem in this area. And the truth is, I don't think it's possible. So what is that problem, you ask? Well, that is the abandonment of cars. All kidding aside, the mayor says, here's an example of just how bad it gets. Just in one street, Swamp Road, from Iseng Song all the way to Route 3, we picked up 400 cars. And this was three years ago. If you go to that same street today, there are 800 cars that need to be picked up from this area. So in a perfect world, when somebody gets in a car accident or when somebody's car breaks down and it no longer runs and they pretty much don't want it anymore, right? Some company comes, they tow it away and they bring it to where it needs to go, right? Well, here in the tourist area of Tuman, where all the hotels are, as you can see behind me, this is the West End Hotel and there's more that way, this area has the highest influx of tourists, of course, because this is usually where they stay. Probably 99% of them stay here in the hotels, right? This is where all the restaurants and things are. Now, like I said, some of them rent a car and they go into the island deeper to explore, maybe to see some nature and things like that, right? Well, in this area, if there is a car accident, if there is a car that breaks down, the government will have it removed immediately because it is an eyesore, right, for tourism. So if these cars are here, the tourists aren't gonna necessarily come. They're gonna think, oh, it's turning into a waste town or something like that, right? So that's why you don't really see them here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna walk down here to Gun Beach, the kind of the farthest point we can go uh, in terms of walking, especially if you're staying at these hotels. This is where the tourists go. See if there's any cars over here that are abandoned. I really don't think there's going to be. And then we're gonna walk the other ways a little way and see if there's any other ones. And then I'm really gonna show you where all these cars are. I can't go visit them all as there are hundreds of them around the island and it would take days. But I'm gonna give you a little taste, especially if you're a tourist, if you're not from Guam here. That way you can see how the images and how the government just focuses on the, the tourism areas and doesn't focus on the rest of the place really. Okay guys, so here I am. This is the entrance to Gun Beach. This is one of the last beaches that tourists can reach by walking or even by the shuttle that they have down here. And I'm not gonna go all the way down there because you actually have to go way down the hill and I don't feel like walking down and then coming back up. Also, there's a shuttle right there. The shuttle can bring tourists all around. As you can see, just from the small clips that I've taken on the walk here, there's lots of parking lots. There are a few other hotels like the Tsubaki Tower, Nico, and things like that. And you don't see any abandoned cars. They're all parking lots where people park and work and stuff like that. There's also a couple of apartments over here, I believe. So you don't see any abandoned cars over here because they remove them. And the reason why I've come down the Gun Beach also is because, uh, like I said, this is the end. So as you can see, the government and stuff, they are trying to make this look as beautiful as possible, even though there's a lot of work that needs to be done in this area because of post-pandemic, post-typhoon and things like that. But it's really sad that there's a big difference from here and then inland, just like I've touched on in some other videos. Right now I'm driving around but the weather is not quite cooperating it is quite uh, rainy today as you can see it's kind of storming now and uh, a little bit difficult to film but it's okay so I'm trying to drive around to spot some of these abandoned cars to show you guys and I've already seen a few of them one thing I want to mention though is that here on the island there are a lot of auto body shops car shops where they're repairing cars there's a lot of dealerships and stuff 
So you will find cars that are abandoned and sometimes broken apart because they got in an accident and that company or that auto repair shop has taken the car because maybe somebody paid them or something. Or if it's a dealership, they have to remove it because it is their responsibility. But when cars become abandoned just by private owners and there's no bank loan or things like that on the car, the car ends up just being left somewhere. So uh, that's what I'm trying to show you is where there are cars that are randomly placed or left in just odd places like on the side of the road and things like that and not in a lot or not in a auto repair shop parking lot. for concern are the hazards the abandoned vehicle fires pose to those surrounding the area. Glenn, are we over the aquifer here? We're definitely over the aquifer. So right now we're leaving the area of Dedito and we're driving into Jigo on the north side going towards the uh, U.S. Air Force Base. And there should be some cars over here. I don't remember if there are some in particular spots, but there always is. You can't ever drive this way and not find abandoned cars. So we'll see what we see over here. All right guys, here is an example that I wanna quickly show you. Here is a car on the side of the road. And look, somebody's using it as an advertisement to advertise some property for 600 grand. But as you can see, look, all the parts are rotting out. This has probably been here for a very long time. There's nothing left to it because people actually burned it. And you can see over there, there's a few of them. Abandoned house over there, abandoned cars. But this is what happened. These cars get into an accident here and somebody pushes it up out of the way and they just leave it. Now eventually somebody does come along and removes it, but sometimes it takes forever, years. As you can see, this has been rusting and rotting away for a very, very long time. But this is so common in the northern area of the island. These cars are just left to rot. And the reason why they're missing so much is because they burned down. So a lot of the material just burned away. But mostly when a car gets in an accident, the first thing that happens is within a few hours, somebody comes and just starts stealing the parts because somebody is not going to come back and take their car or they're not going to tow it away because A, they got in an accident and they weren't uh, insured. They don't have the money. They don't maybe have the legality to drive the car, so they don't want to get in trouble. So they just leave it and they take what they need out of the car and then people come and take it. And the other problem is people don't have the money to tow it away or to send it to the shop to get it repaired. So that's why they just sit here and they rot away. And that's one of the, the bad parts about the abandoned cars here on Guam. This is just two of them, right? But they're all over this area. All right, guys, as you can see, I've just driven down the road a little bit. Here's another one, an abandoned car. No idea what kind of car it really is, but as you can see, there's nothing left to it because it's been burned again. Burned, usually graffitied, but all the stuff that was there that people needed, they had taken when they needed it. Now as you can see, this is just some back road where there's some private residences, some houses. So as you can see, this is very common on these back roads because people just pull off off of the main road and then they just leave their car when there's something wrong with it. And over here in the back roads, 
Nobody's gonna come and pick up these cars and move them. They're just gonna leave them here because they're away from the tourist sites, the main areas where all the traffic really is. So they're not in the way. And so the government doesn't really care to move them. And then that's why you have looters going in them and destroying them and taking all the parts and then burning them. It's really crazy. Well guys, it is a few days later. Um, that day I was driving north on the island, going into Jigo as I was saying. I didn't see so many cars, as many as I thought I would see. I think they recently removed some because usually if they are very close to the main road, they will try to remove them after some time. Somebody could have complained, I don't know. But I was gonna go around the other side of the north side of the island and see if there was some over there because there's usually accidents and cars are left. But it started raining pretty heavy and it wasn't really possible and then I was gonna go out the next day and it was raining all day so it is about a couple days later it is extremely windy right now in the middle of January the wind has been picking up a lot but I figured I'd continue the video today and try to find some more of these cars to give you some examples of how it's one of the most ugly things here on the island that needs to be addressed better what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drive around a little bit in the center part of the island hopefully see some cars and then work my way back to the north side but go on the other side of the island that I didn't hit the other day and try to find some for you guys so place to just kind of see a scenic view of the beach or the ocean I guess we can say right and it's really rough like as you can see the waves are coming in and it's just ripping apart this little shore right here which is really crazy it's almost like typhoon weather but it's just been extremely windy and stuff in the past few days and it will be for the next week it looks like so anyways the continuation of this video isn't about this little area here but it's about that car problem the abandonment of vehicles here on the island I really don't understand, as you can see, there are vehicles everywhere. Sometimes there's more than other times, right? It looks like the government or whoever, they're doing something to try to clean them up, but not enough because there's still a lot out there. And there's a lot that I can't show you because they're hidden in areas. A lot of them are deep in the brush, in the like jungle area where it's just overgrown and you don't even know the cars are there. But something needs to happen. They need to clean them up because they're very, very ugly outside of this tourist area you know these coastal beach areas but the ones that do get in accidents on the main roads they usually clean them clean them up very quickly but there's so many more just hidden so the point of this video isn't to hate on guam or to pick out the bads or the flaws of guam i'm just curious to why there is such this issue on the island like i said maybe there's the same issue in other places around the world different islands and stuff but why is it that many of these cars just get left there to rot and then, you know, nothing happens, nothing is done about it? Um, and just in the tourist areas where things are actually taken care of, like I said. Now I'm just going out here for a walk, so I'll show you the different angles while I discuss this topic some more. But one of the interesting things is that I've seen on social media on the news sites of Guam, they talk about how they want to put an end to the people burning cars in certain areas and looting them and stuff. They want the public to give some sort of information if they have leads on who's doing it, when they're doing it and stuff like that. Well, to be honest, what they need to do is they need to tow these cars away. When there is an accident, they need to move it out of there, bring it somewhere. They need to have some sort of funding maybe to remove all these abandoned uh, vehicles from around the island in places where they shouldn't be. Uh, especially because it is a bit of contamination in a way, especially when the vehicle has oil and gas and things like that, and they just let it rot. Sometimes people bust it open, they burn it, and then it leaches into the ground and it's a super bad thing. Now, another thing that they could do, which I don't know if they're actually doing, is 
they can have somebody patrolling the island and marking, you know, where these abandoned cars are and then kind of putting on a list of removal and then eventually working to get them removed and, and brought to where they need to go. As well as, you know, many cars have VIN numbers, license plates and things like that so they can identify whose car it was and hold that person accountable, uh, responsible for, you know, basically leaving their car somewhere random. Now, I don't know if they're already doing that. Maybe they are, maybe you guys know, I'm not sure. But that's something that could be done. It could be enforced. And I think that's one of the problems is that there's not enough enforcement. But one of the other things I wanted to mention about the car situation here is that, as I said, um, there's a lot of accidents and things. Well, the problem is people don't know how to drive here. Of course, there's many people that are good drivers, but many of them are very unsafe drivers that create many accidents. I saw a few accidents today. Yesterday I was almost in an accident. Somebody almost T-boned me. People are in accidents in parking lots. There's a lot of fatalities here because of accidents. Because people simply just don't know how to drive. They don't know how to follow rules. Everyone's in a rush. No one can take their time and drive. You know, you would think you're on an island. It's like island time. Just be cool, be calm, just drive, you know? And don't put your life in danger or other people's lives. And so that's what happens is many of these cars, they're abandoned because some of them get in accidents. Like I said, they can't afford to fix them or maybe they're even beyond fixing, you know? So they're just like, yeah, I'll leave it here. Well, it's not the thing to do, right? And I understand some people are in um, difficult moments and there's nothing they can do really other than leave it there because they don't have the money to tow it away or something, but. So another thing I want to add to this video is that there are a lot of cars in Guam. I believe there are more cars than there should be because in times or at times, the traffic can be very congested for such a small island. So I believe that doesn't help, you know. The more cars there are, the more cars there's gonna be with uh, many different problems and stuff like that. So maybe in the future, to help the situation, they actually need to reduce the amount of cars, reduce the amount of cars that they are selling here. Well guys, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, you can spend days and days trying to drive around the island and finding most of the abandoned cars and stuff. But what I'm gonna do is I need to head back north on the island. I wanna go on the other side. The weather is actually really good today, minus the wind. So I'm going to try to find a few more cars. If I don't find any, that's gonna be it for finding abandoned cars around the island. But that's just a little glimpse to one of the things, one of the, the issues that needs to be solved here. And as I make my way back to the vehicle, I just want to say that, of course, again, um, there's abandoned cars all over the world, but here it's just a really big issue. It's bigger than I've seen before in the United States and while traveling abroad. So whoever can fix the situation, I hope they can work on it and improve it over time.